Good morning. Today we're going to investigate the motion of this car as it hits the ice. Notice that at a speed of 7.6 meters per second, the car can negotiate the turn safely. Now let's increase the speed and see what happens. 15.6 meters per second. Notice the car spins out. So our primary objective is to understand the equations of centripetal forces for cars when they're turning. And our secondary objective is to solve word problems related to centripetal forces and cars. So here's a standard physics question. For a car, 2000 kg, that is turning on ice, coefficient of friction of 0 0.6 between tires and ice, determine a. The maximum force of friction exerted by the tires on the ice and b. The maximum turning speed if the radius of the turn is 10 meters. So let's look at part a. The maximum force of friction exerted by the tires on the ice. For this we need a diagram. That force pointing downwards represents gravity given by the formula mg or 2,000 kilograms times the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second per second. So the force of gravity acting on this car is 19,600 newtons. Force of gravity is of course also known as the weight. In addition, we have a force pointing upwards. That force is commonly called the support force and it's also called a normal force. So the question is, how large is this support or normal force in this situation? Well, we will assume the car is not accelerating in the vertical direction. In the up-down direction, the acceleration is zero. Please pause the video and think about this for a moment. I hope you've given it some thought. So when we assume the car is not accelerating in the vertical direction, this implies that the forces are balanced in the vertical direction. And so that means that the weight and a normal force have to be equal to each other. So what about friction? Friction always acts parallel to a surface. In addition, for a car turning at constant speed, it acts towards the center of the turn. And that's the force of friction drawn there. Illustrated in this diagram, friction points in that direction. Remember, the coefficient of friction for this example was 0 0.6. Please pause the video now and try to solve for the force of friction. All right. Friction is given by the formula, coefficient, multiplied by the normal force. Coefficient is that value, there's the normal force. And we end up with this value for the force of friction, labeled there. Now what does this really mean? Well, this is the maximum force of friction that the tires can exert on the ice. Beyond the maximum force, well, the car can no longer turn. And we see that here. When a car exceeds the maximum force of friction, well, the car ends up spinning out. We also saw this in the simulation, where the car spins out. So, our maximum force of friction is 11,760 newtons. Now let's focus on part B, the maximum turning speed, if the radius of the turn is 10 meters. For this, we need to write an FC statement, a centripetal force statement. So the question is, which forces assist the car in turning? Which forces act towards the center of the turn. Well, the only force that assists the car in this situation is friction. 
We know the value of friction is 11,760. Now, why are we using this value? We're using this value because the question specifically says determine the maximum turning speed. So for the maximum turning speed, we need to use the maximum amount of force. Substituting our statement for centripetal force, it's always MA, just like F net equals MA, FC is also equal to MA. And substituting our equation for centripetal acceleration, it's speed squared over the turning radius. And there we have our equation to operate with. Making some more substitutions for mass and the turning radius, and doing some math, dividing 2,000 by 10, doing some more math, dividing each side by 200, we end up with a turning speed, a maximum turning speed, of 7.67 meters per second. Now the question is, does this make sense? Well, let's see. We're going to try turning at 7.8 meters per second on that same piece of ice, with coefficient of 0 0.6 and a radius of 10 meters and notice the car spins out. So yes, it makes sense. Problem 2. A car attempts to complete a turn in the shape of a semicircle. There's the radius. Traveling at a constant speed of 27 meters per second. Part A. Calculate the force of friction required to complete the turn. B. Calculate the maximum force of friction if the coefficient of friction between the road and tires is 0 0.055 and C, calculate the minimum turning radius required to complete the turn at 27 meters per second. All right, please pause the video. I'd like you to work on part A right now. All right, I hope you gave that a try. We start off once again with our centripetal force statement. Which force is helping us to turn? It's friction. Of course, FC is always MA, just like F net is MA. And substituting our equation for AC, once again, please pause the video and substitute your numbers and solve for friction. Okay, substituting our mass, our speed, and our radius, the friction works out to be 12,150 newtons. So what does this actually mean? For a car that weighs 1,000 kilograms, Moving at 27 meters per second in a turn with a 60 meter radius, it requires 12,150 newtons of friction in order to complete the turn. Part B. Calculate the maximum force of friction if the coefficient of friction between the road and tires is 0 0.55. All right, pause the video. Please also try this. So recalling this diagram, we note the force of gravity is 9,800 newtons, also called the weight, 9.8 times 1,000. That balances with the normal force as previously mentioned. Friction is given by this formula. And working through the math, we end up with 5,390 newtons. So what does this actually mean? Well, it means that the car cannot possibly complete the turn at 27 meters per second for a 60 meter radius. It is physically impossible. It's physically impossible because we just calculated a few moments ago that to complete this turn, the tires would have to exert 12,150 newtons. But as we just showed, the maximum amount those tires can exert is only 5,390. So we've gone beyond the physical limitations of the tires. As a result, if you attempt to make that turn at 27 meters per second for a 60 meter radius, the car will spin out. We've exceeded the maximum amount of friction available, which is only 5,390 newtons. So to complete the turn, we either need to decrease the speed or we need to increase the turning radius. And that's the whole point of question C.
calculate the minimum turning radius required to complete the turn at 27 meters per second. We know at 60 meters, it fails. So now how wide do we have to make this turn? All right, pause the video, please try. We start off with FC equals friction again. And now we're using our upper limit for friction, which is 5,390 newtons. Substituting some more and using our numbers, we end up with a radius of 135.3 meters or in significant digits, 140 meters. So clearly we have to increase the turning radius in order to decrease our centripetal acceleration, which will decrease the amount of force required. So could we have solved this part of the question without knowing the mass of the car? And the answer is yes. So we start off with FC equals friction. And we substitute our formula for friction, coefficient multiplied by the normal force. And recalling this diagram here, normal force and weight, they are balanced. So we substitute the force of gravity, Fg, for normal force. And recall that weight, or the force of gravity, is 9.8, acceleration due to gravity, multiplied by mass. Also recall that Fc is always ma. And let's look at this equation for just a moment. What do you notice? Well, hopefully you notice that mass is on each side of the equation. And when we have a situation like this, we can cancel out the term of mass. And so we simply end up with centripetal acceleration is equal to the coefficient multiplied by 9.8. Substituting an expression for centripetal acceleration, there we have it. Notice we have an equation that is independent of mass. And making some more substitutions, I'll let you work through the math. You could solve for the radius, and you'll see it's the same value we just got a few moments ago. So I hope you enjoyed today's activity. I hope you got something out of these word problems. Have a great day. Bye-bye.